the guest speaker. For the first part, we had three guest speakers tonight. Um, myself, Kerry Hurigan and Meryl DeFinis. And um, in, I suppose, the whole theme of the show, or the gig, it's all about this. How to make money as a bookkeeper without bookkeeping. However, for those of you who are not bookkeepers in the room, can I see you raise your hands, please? Okay, so all you need to do is, if, for example, if you're a gardener, you say, how to make money as a gardener without actually gardening. <laughs> how to make money as an accountant without actually accounting. <laughs> Any other scenarios you can come to think of? So just put. So when I say how to make money as a bookkeeper without bookkeeping, it's because this is a bookkeeping association, but it can be for everybody. Thank you, Julie. Our guest speakers tonight that will share in this topic are myself, Susan Hart, for those of you who don't know me, Kerry Hurrigan, and Meryl DeFittis. We want to take you on a journey tonight, and at the end, our hope is to inspire you to change the way you look at your business and your ability to earn money. Let's begin. I want to give you a little story, or share with you a little story about my business life, and I'm not quite sure whether um, I've shared that with you before, so it's very important to understand where I've come from so that you could actually understand what I have done in the present. Thank you. I worked as a secretary for an accountant for 10 years, from 1988 to 1998. He taught me the fundamental ideas of accounting via handwritten ledgers. You know those big green ledgers? Mm. I used a typewriter and carbon paper, and in 1988, um, you know, there wasn't any like major computers that you can actually just do NYB and, and all that sort of stuff. You really had to type it up. And... But you know what? When I first started, I didn't even know what a balance sheet or a profit and loss was. I was a really good typist. I used carbon paper. This was my desk. Not really. Kind of. Now, is it a telex machine? Because I used a telex machine. Anyway. Oh, it's an animal machine. See, I didn't even know what an animal machine was. Okay, thank you, Julie. An abacus. An abacus. Anyway, moving along. Thank you, Julie. In 1998, I left my accountant way behind and joined the Hunter Business Enterprise Center and worked as a receptionist, bookkeeper, promotions, and event manager. And it was at this place that I found two very important people that changed my life forever. Thank you, Julie. The first person was Jane Stacy. I met her and I went, wow, amazing. She doesn't look like, she does not look like this. Now, she's a mother of two and she's having a wonderful time and she's no longer in business. Um, no, that's, that, that's Miss Janie. Um, now let me just see. Um, so Jane challenged me to open my own bookkeeping business and placed me in the 1999 pilot program for the Women in Business Mentor Program. And that was the first in the Hunter Valley. Yeah. Thank you. I was also introduced to, to some 39 other women, mentors and mentorees, and amongst these women, I created a powerful network that even today I feel the effects from. Thank you. The second person I met was Jason Hart, my husband. <laughs> Jason is a qualified accountant, and I was very fortunate that he was an accountant because um, if I had opened up a bookkeeping business on my own, I would be in serious trouble. <laughs> because the amount of knowledge you need to service the small business community is huge. It's not just about bookkeeping. To service the small business community as a bookkeeper, your knowledge has to be huge. Would you agree? That's probably why the government has now legislated that all contractual bookkeepers are qualified and registered with the Tax Practitioners Board, which I am. <laughs> Thank you, Julie. So we, my husband and I, we opened our bookkeeping practice in 1999. We have consistently held 60 to 70 clients on our, data, on our database every year, and over the past 13 years, we have surfaced over 800 clients. Back in 1999, contractual bookkeeping was a novelty. It truly was. There was a few of us out there, but not, not as what it is now. 
and the encounters that we approached were intrigued. So I looked and smiled. You were what? <laughs> what are you? Um, they didn't give us any work. Because GST wasn't in. It was 1999. So when did GST come in? Um, so they had no need of us, but as soon as the 1st of July hit, guess who they called? They said, wow, they could no longer, um, you know, the compliance for business activity statements every quarter, instead of historically doing work every year and then they just bring it in, they get bookkeepers internally to do it, the ATO changed it so that every quarter businesses had to actually declare what they were earning every quarter. And the accountants at that time, they just couldn't handle it. So it opened the floodgate, unfortunately, to a lot of bookkeepers who probably shouldn't have been in practice. And I shouldn't have been, but I was there because of my husband who was a professional accountant. And with my marketing skills and with his accountancy skills, our bookkeeping um, flourished. Did we make mistakes? <laughs> Absolutely. I remember this day, it was pretty sad. A client, yeah, I know, it's dreadful, just moving on. Did we gain knowledge? That's a bit better, isn't it? Now, think about this. In order to gain a client base of 800 clients, I've had to sell our services 800 times successfully. Would you agree? I've not taken into account all the times I've sold and was unsuccessful when I said, no way, no. I'm virtually a walking encyclopedia of how to sell bookkeeping services. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now that might sound a bit arrogant and egotistical. That's okay. The fact is, if you do something consistently over and over again and you do it successfully, you become an expert. Would you agree to that? Yes. I think I am an expert. You can slide on now. <laughs> when Julie Ferguson and Bev Holder back then and I started United Bookkeepers, we had no idea the longevity of this business and the, and the great people that we could gather to sustain it. We love it. However, there is one downside to one part of my job that is very frustrating and it's the 1-300 number. None of you have called it, that's okay, but everybody else has called it. And I get all types of questions, because it's free, so they ring me. This is a few examples. Um, I want to pay my electricity bill. Can you, I mean, it's not this, no, no, this is United Bookkeepers. Oh, sorry, love. Can I get a cab to Hamilton? No. How did you get my number? It's a 1-300 number. And this is a really big one. Do I really need qualifications to be a bookkeeper? But the biggest question I always get is this one. How do you find bookkeeping clients? It drives me nuts. Obviously the first three questions are easy. No, no, and yes. But this one, this particular question takes about 30, to an, 30 minutes to an hour. Um, because that's what we do in Army Bookkeepers. We're generous. We want to give up our time. We want to help bookkeepers. That's why we started it. We're not in it to make money. <laughs> <laughs> so we do it for the love of it. Um, so, but you can imagine how boring it can be and tedious that it became. You know, I perfected it. It was like I had it down 25 minutes pat. Yep, I, I can tell you exactly how to do book, get bookkeepers, get clients. Blah 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 blah. Okay. So let me. So that's my background. That's what's led me to this point now. So let me tell you what happened to me three months ago that changed my life. Again, slide. I have a friend that I complain to all the time. My friend and I had lots of conversations. During one particular conversation, I was going on and on about how I repeat myself every day to these bookkeepers. Now, don't they know I'm a busy woman? I mean, God, can't they just... It's so easy to find clients. God's sake, it's so easy. I don't understand why people can't do it. Anyway, so my friend said this. Thank you, Julie. What if you took this question and answered it and turned it into an e-book and have it accessible on iTunes for people to download? Then you'll never have to repeat yourself again. Problem solved. 
I said, what? <laughs> don't, I don't really understand that. And then she said, thank you, Julie, knowledge that people pay you for. Wow, I thought, over seven years, if everyone just paid me 10 bucks for that, we could retire. <laughs> it was an absolute revelation to me. Wow, could I really turn my knowledge into something that people would download and buy? Then came the excuses, and Shirley, you know all about these excuses, because I have heaps of them. Thank you, Julie. I'm not a writer. I write in long sentences. Julie knows about that. I can't even spell author. <laughs> what if I get sued? I don't have the time. Blah, 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 blah. Poor Julie, when I send her an email, she goes, I don't understand. <laughs> can, can you, what are you saying? I'm like, no idea either. Let me just get my thoughts together and ring you. I am not a good communicator in the written word. Although I think I do fairly well when I speak to you, but not in the written word. And that's okay. I have Julie for that. Um, so my friend was very kind and guided me along the way and I did what was called a brain dump of everything I know about finding clients into one long paragraph. <laughs> Actually, one long 15 pages worth of paragraph. I didn't worry about grammar or spelling, I just went for it and it looked something like this. Thank you, Julie. That's it. That's a brain dump. <laughs> How great's that? It's just one long sentence. Oh, there's one there. There's a sentence there. <laughs> there's, a, there's something there. Some sort of grammar thing. So that's what's called a brain dump. Now, if you can't tie, you can put in a decafine, you know, whatever you need to do. you just got to get from your brain to paper or into a dictaphone. Don't worry about the quality. Just worry about getting it out there. Because in every single one of us, there is something that somebody else needs to know. Okay? So... Brain dump it. Thank you, Julie. I then organised one paragraph into 15 pages, added photos, sent it to Julie to edit and correct any typos and spelling mistakes and paragraph problems. And suddenly, da, 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 my ebook was born. There it is. 15 pages, that's just the cover. So don't get too excited. But um, that's just the cover. And it was so thrilling. So. Um, Julie and I are very proud of it, aren't we? Because she really was an integral part of making it look great. Um, so, uh, uh, next slide, I think. Ah, yes. The first week, so we had it up on our website. So you can see this is our website. Uh, this is the front page, and just here, as a bookkeeper, do you find it hard to find clients? We've uploaded it, here's the ebook. Download a free ebook because we wanted our purpose was to double, triple, quadruple our database. And we thought this will get them in. This will get them in for sure. I mean, I've had what thousands of people ring me, so they will download it. Great. Guess how many people downloaded it in the first week? Have a guess. No one. Come on. Two thousand. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, three. It was, it was close. It was Julie. Myself. <laughs> so I'm kind of skeptical our IT person. <laughs> I was really sad. I mean, what? I put all this effort into it and I got three and it was Julie and I. <laughs> Just awful. Okay. So in November last year, I went to a day workshop with my friend who I complained to and helped me with, to get to this point so far. Um, it was all about ebooks, webinars, marketing ebook products online, and gained some valuable knowledge about how to get this information out to people. And it's so easy. <laughs> Slide, please. Who's ever heard of a thing called social media? <laughs> Have you all heard of that? No? Yes? The hands should be going up. Or your hands should be going up. You've all heard of social media. Yes, good. Thank you. Next slide. In particular, LinkedIn. Who has a LinkedIn page? I need to see your hands. Who has a LinkedIn page? Okay, that's all right. Out of interest, who's active on LinkedIn? Mm. Yeah, okay, that's all right. 
but whoever knows what that means to be active on LinkedIn? Me. Melanie? Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you right now what it means to be active on LinkedIn. So, thank you, Julie. Here's my profile. There's me, my little glasses and my little hair going on. Some dude at the back, which I don't know. I don't know how to get rid of it either, but anyway. That's me. And I joined 30 bookkeeping and accounting organisations across the world. Thank you, Julie. This is some of them. And thank you, Julie. And that's some of them. Just random accounting, bookkeeping, um, SESU, Zero, all their on, on cloud accounting, all that sort of stuff. Whatever I can get my hands on. Because that's what you have to do. You have to join groups and you have to start chatting. But I didn't have time. I don't have time to chat on LinkedIn. So what I decided to do, I posted a link from our front page, which is just the URL. Who knows what the URL is? Yeah? So that when people click onto it, it goes to our front page. So I, I, I took that link and I posted it to every single group I have. Thank you, Julie. And this is what it said. This is automatic. Our IT guide, Ken Stemple, did it for us. Free ebook: How to find bookkeeping clients easily. A great little manual to give you heaps of tips that bookkeepers have successfully used to get new clients. This ebook was created by bookkeepers in the industry, and we hope you enjoy it. Our next one is Occupational Health and Safety for the Bookkeeping Community. So I posted that first day, 119 comments. 26 people liked it. And it was downloaded, thank you, Julie, 114 on the first day. A little bit later on, another 180. Is it 160? 180. See here, active, 756 have downloaded it to date. And only 86 of those people have actually un unsubscribed, which is fantastic, which means that they're still getting our newsletters, they're still getting lots of... So we have quadrupled almost our database. It's been phenomenal. And one more, thanks, Julie. 72 in December. So as you can see the graph, it goes up and up and up. It keeps, keep, it, there is never ever a down. We get hits every day. We just got a surge a couple of weeks ago. One day, 14, 14, 16 new subscribers. And I thought, what have I done? And it wasn't anything I've done. New people have joined the groups. And they go back and they go, they go oh, this is fantastic. And they email me and say, see you from UK. Do you have an organisation here? I said, oh, I'm not yet. <laughs> um, so what I'm saying to you is that the power of I just did it once. I haven't chatted to anybody. I did it once, uh, and I we've had uh, 756 subscribers. How amazing is that? Um, so next slide, thanks. Imagine if I charge seven dollars. Imagine if I charge seven dollars. 842 downloads. $5,894. <laughs> and we're going to be doing that in the future. So our plan is, take this ebook that we've created, we're going to move that into a, a, a product for $7 or $9, whatever we come up with, and then the new free ebook, which is the Occupational Health and Safety for the on-site bookkeeper, is going to be the free book, the new free ebook on our front page. And so what the essence is, is that we give them so much that they fall in love with us, that they want to buy. The more you give, the more they buy. The more you give for free, the more they buy from you. Kerry Hurrigan is the friend I complain to a lot. Kerry Hurrigan is the one who showed me all of this information. She told me, Sue, you just give it away. Just give it away. It doesn't matter. I'm like, give it away. It's my... It's who I am. I can't give it away. So just give it away. Because once if you once you reach that point of like I can't give it away, that's when you've got to give it away. Because it, it, it will come back to you. And it really will. And it really will. And we've had six new members also because of the energy generated from that and the people talking about it. Um, so let's just recap th recap. Thanks, Julie. Okay, this is it. In conclusion, this is what you've got to do. Find an idea that solves a problem for other people. One. Do a brain dump onto paper or into a recording device. Reorganise your brain dump into pages. Find a friend to read it and edit it. You can get Julie, you'll pay her. 
<laughs> Google ebook skins and get a cover. I'm sure these chicks will talk about that. Upload it to your website, social media, LinkedIn, join groups associated with your idea, book in to get trained if you don't know about it with Meryl, and post your ebook link and see what happens. Believe me, you've just experienced what happened to me, and it didn't cost me a cent. It cost me a zero to do that, except for time. So, right, start today, don't delay. Thank you, Julie. And that's the journey. <laughs>